Okay, cool. I'm here with the amazing Reverberate. Uh, we met at the Brian Music Conference in September. We're back again. Uh, it's May. Tell us a bit about yourself uh, and uh, your DJ styles. Cool. Uh, first, Marcos, thanks thanks for having me. Uh, Mixel, thanks, guys. Uh, so basically, I am a music producer, DJ. Uh, I'm a and r and um, label owner as well. Uh, so yeah, I've been in the industry for uh, for a number of years now, uh, trying to make the best out of it, basically, yeah. <laughs> and you live in Brighton, right? I live in Brighton. And yes, I'm from Brazil, uh, but I live in Brighton for the past three years. Uh, so yeah, so you're Brighton loving, at home. You're loving Brighton. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a place like I, I don't think I would change this for the world because this this place is amazing. Close to the beach, it's at the beach, and like people in here are amazing, and uh, like the the scene is good. Uh, the people are so open and open minded. There's art everywhere. You can find art everywhere yeah, on in this the street, place, man. on the street <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Like you always, if you're going for a stroll in the street, you're gonna find some nice stuff to see. So yeah. I'm, I love it here. Yeah, yeah, and everyone's so friendly and absolutely. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's how we met, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Just being like, yeah, oh yeah, what are you doing? What's your name? And that's yeah. it. That's how, how people are so open in here. Yeah, so yeah. I love it. And you play out in the clubs in Brighton? Uh, so basically I played at the, um, at the Concord. Um, I played a couple of times uh, and I'm looking into the Arch now. So yeah, some, but obviously COVID was here. So yeah. it's just like two years and a half at home from the three years that I'm here. So yeah, that's <laughs> annoying. Now is the time to start it's going it's going to be good, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah we're just looking forward to it. What genres of music do you play mostly? Uh, I do mostly tech house. Uh, I do some uh, minimal tech as well, but everything kind of like related to the tech. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's that's mostly what I do, what I produce and what I play. Nice. Yeah. So we're going to talk about uh, music library, we're going to geek out a little bit okay. and all of that kind of stuff. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, where and how do you download your tracks? What do you do for music discovery? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Cool. So I have two main sources, which is a uh, regular uh, B-Port digging. Uh, and the second one is as I'm label owner, then I have lots of tracks sent to me as promo. And uh, I, I dig out like this as well, because we also um, have uh, ourselves into promo lists of other labels. Yep. And myself as a DJ as well, not only as a label, I go through the promos and then the guys just, they send out their mailing lists. That's how I get yeah, lots of my tracks as well. Yep. Uh, I always try to dig for those uh, tracks that not many people have. Uh, that's that's how we do it, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, most most of it would be this this two ways really for for searching. Yeah. Do you use InFlight? Someone was mentioning. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I use InFlight for uh, sending out. Oh, yeah. uh, because of the label, so we yep. send out through InFlight. But I haven't got yet because it's a it's a new platform for uh, for us. Yeah. Uh, so I haven't used it for uh, receiving, but I. Know many of the labels who I am signed to on their yep. promo list. Yep. They use in flight, Got it. so I receive it from in flight, but it's basically directly from the labels. And uh, when you get your promos, how uh, how does the metadata look? How how clean is all of that? Uh, look, uh, I think <laughs> <laughs> is it a mess? Uh, it is. Yes, like it's most of the times they really don't like the labels don't really pay much attention to it, yeah. and this is a discussion. I recently had with my partners, which was you have to because on on, on in flight, if you send in, in a WAV, mm -hmm. you cannot put metadata. Okay. But if you put in the uh, AIF, yep. you can put metadata. Yep. But even though they just put like the name and that's it. Yep. So we are putting basically the name. We put the release date, the name of the album, the artist. We put the the um, the actual folder, like the actual uh, cover of yeah. of the artwork. Yeah. Uh, because uh, most of them just just look like okay, I have to I have to go on whatever software and I have to edit it and yeah. make sure it looks nice for for playing on a CDJ. You know? Yeah, yeah. So as a producer, like I finished the track, let's send it out. Yeah, like, there's this sort of boring step that you need to do with all the metadata. Yeah, um, yeah. And so you guys are cleaning all that up. Yeah, because As yeah, good. well, the artists are not going to do that really. Yeah. They 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 really don't even think about it, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but us as a label, we we just go there. We see okay, it's not done. Yeah. So then we can just pass it on through the software and make sure the artwork is there. Yeah. Make sure the names are there and everything. Yeah. And uh, and when you uh, are putting together your own uh, playlists. Yeah. Uh, so you download your tracks from Beatport. 
Uh, you're importing them. Which DJ software are you using? Uh, I'm currently using uh, Record Box just to pass it to to the USBs. USB, yeah. Uh, just to setting some cue points. I use very basic. Uh, I don't I don't go very very deep into it. My mm -hmm. my cue bases are quite basic. Yep. Uh, my cue bases. <laughs> my points. cue points are quite basic. <laughs> yeah. Geeking and, out on software. Yeah, yeah, I'm going through that on the software now. No, but it's 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 just very very simple thing. Uh, just so I'm able to see everything on the CDJ on yep. the way that I will be able to do my mixing better. So do you only play on CDJs? You don't ever use a laptop? I used to. I used to use a lot. I used to have the the uh, X1 and Z1 from mm -hmm. Tractor. Mm -hmm. Used to Tractor a lot. Yeah. Uh, but then just after having like a pair of CDJs, uh, I just dropped it out. Because it's like, well, I have the CDJs here, so just did you? That's, that's what we did. Found. You enjoy using Tractor when you were using Tractor? I did, I did, I did. I like a lot of the the um, the um, uh, the effects on yeah. Tractor. The fact that you can visualize a lot and you can have four decks easy. Yeah. Because I love to use uh, loops. I have to work with loops a lot, and uh, you know, kind of like a Corolla style, Rich Halting style, that is like loop behind loop and loop and loop. Yeah. Uh, I love to do that. Um, but uh, as I said, after going back to CDJ, then kind of like Tractor became absolute for me in a way. Yep. So I just went to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're uh, exporting to USB. Do you have your entire collection on your USB or do you just take the sets for um, where you're going? Why? So uh, every gig I play, I have a bit of preparation. Uh, yeah. So. I kind of have uh, a folder of the tracks that I think it would work there. Yep. But uh, I always come with uh, three 128 gigabytes USBs. Uh -huh. They are mimicked, so they're mirrored one for to the other. Yeah. It's just in case if I have any issues, right? Yeah, so yeah, I have yeah. them prepared. But you I draw carry, one in the pine or something. <laughs> I, yeah, I carry I carry basically my whole library um, on the USBs, but I have folders for the specific parties and you know. No, because it's, it's easier because I, I I mentalize I visualize what what can happen during the party. Yeah, and then I just have it kind of like set. Yeah, but I don't stick to it. Of course, yeah. I just go and you know not preparing the whole set. Yeah, but just bashing like a hundred tracks in that playlist. Yeah, which I think would work. Yeah, if not if it's not working, I just go to other folks. Do you build them from other playlists? You go do a bit of digging in through other playlists and go. I think these are gonna work. These are gonna work when you're building. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I dig through all my playlists, yep. basically go through all of them, and then I see, oh, this might work, this might work, this might work, and then I build a one new playlist for that event, basically. Do you sort, do you sort by genre or, um, you know, any of the metadata? Do you do sorting or do you, do, do you use any of the recommendation tools or any of that kind of stuff? Um, I basically do everything from scratch. Yeah. Um, I have it. You've got a mental map in your brain of where. Kind of, kind of. So basically I, I have all my tracks 2015, 16, 17, blah, 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 until, until now. Yeah. Divided by month. Okay. So I save them all by month. In Recordbox. In Recordbox. Yeah, I save everything by month. Yeah. And then uh, I also have other playlists divided by genre. Yeah. So if I know that is a recent track, but I don't remember which which uh, like subgenre I selected in, yeah. I go straight to I know what month I downloaded it and then I know it's there. So it's basically a second way of doing it. Yep. Uh, and on the um, on the genre side, yep. I just put let's say techno uh, and tech house. Uh, and then on Tech House, I will have Tech House Groove or Tech House Peak Time or Tech House uh, Chills is, or whatever. And is that how you're tagging the tracks in the metadata or is that um, you're build, building playlists? Building playlists. For the subgenres, basically. Y yes. The, the, the only tagging that I do are with the, the star system. Yeah. So I just do like uh, five stars is the ones more energetic. Yeah. All the way down to one, which is like less energetic. But your stars is basically about energy rather than about how much you like the track. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Because it, if, if, it's, if it's just my, how much I, I, I like the tracks, I'm going to be like, I, I I love them all. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be there. Exactly. So I just go through energy because then I can kind of like see exactly where uh, where I should lead the set or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. 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 And uh, do you? Um, uh, and so in terms of your prep, you keep it quite uh, minimal in terms of the cue points and beat grids and stuff. Presume? Do you um, beat match by ear or do you use the? Yeah, I do. I do beach mat by ear, uh, but the cue points for me are basically for. Um 
getting me out of difficult situations. So okay. let me explain. I put the cue point on the first 120A uh, beats. Yeah. Because during the breakdown, I put another one 128 beats before the main drop. Uh -huh. Because I like to mix drop with drop yeah and i think breaks with breaks yeah uh and this way i will never get lost yeah right because i know if i do exactly on that cue point yeah the drops are going to come exactly together yeah and uh, and then i always put as well on the a section of the track i put on the drop the b section i put one on the drop the yep. c section one on the drop so if i need to backs and forwards yeah. i can just switch around i have one in the beginning of the break as well and do you do that for every track yeah really yeah religiously religiously and oh. uh, just uh, recently uh, i had a very bad experience that um i sold my my old computer and i completely forgot to export everything so uh, i had to go through every single cue point on all my tracks since the beginning of time and that took me probably about two months to do oh my God. it was same oh no. but i had to do it did you have playlists or no playlists either no you i had, had all to the do source it all from scratch from scratch i had only by month right because right. they, they, they were my folders the folders on the so i had desktop. to just import everything go through everything oh again but it was i tell you what it was great it's very very uh it's a lot of work yeah but it was amazing because i listened to tracks back from 2015 yeah. that i forgot about and i just i took it back and i was like this is like b-sides that it still work yeah, you know? right. yeah. Then, okay so we were talking about uh your uh dj library fail when your computer so so, so 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 tell us again so you you sold your computer yes tell us what happened so basically i sold it and i uh formatted my computer and then uh before selling obviously i formatted it as soon as i formatted it i i just like oh my god my record box i didn't save anything so i was like no cue points anymore no playlists anymore no anything i had to start from scratch I contact the, um, uh, the the support, but obviously because you have to you have to pay for the service. I didn't I didn't even know there was a service that you could pay or anything. Uh, but yeah, so I just lost it all. I had to build everything again and go through since 2015 all my tracks. Like uh, it was a nightmare. How long did it take you? Uh, yeah, it took me like a, a good two to three months to do it. Uh -huh. Like definitely a good two to three months. But it was it was really good that I could at least go back to the tracks and go back to old tracks and oh yeah that's still a banger now like uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to keep playing this so tracks from even before from tracks from 2012 13 i was like they still sound great because you know like some b-sides and stuff is it just works yeah like so that's that that was good to bring them back and presumably now your library is like uh you've got no debt you got no old stuff that's not, for, um, you know, uh, got all the metadata and stuff. You sorted everything. It's clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to do it all again. So basically, I just I went through every every single cue point, every single metadata, making sure that I had uh, the name correctly, the the track correctly, the album correctly. But it just took me a long time, and I know ninety nine percent of the people wouldn't do it. <laughs> I was just I was just crazy. I don't know. I did that, but I, I'm glad I did. I don't know. I was talking to a guy earlier who does everything by key by ear yeah so he tags all his tracks by key and he does it by ear so no analysis and then he does his sets based on going through the whole circle the of camelot beats. will yeah wow i mean i don't think he's camelot will i think he's old school yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah exactly just like his, his own wheel so you know everyone's <laughs> everyone's different man <laughs> jesus that's crazy man like well to be honest if i had a year like right. his to yeah. to listen to track and then i would be like oh, yeah yeah man just <laughs> producing all the time that's me now <laughs> like don't even even be carrying about DJ, I hope he just producing all the time. But that's really good, man. That's yeah, really good. Cool. No, but I do, I do uh, track analysis, but the one uh, inside Record Box straight away. Yeah. yeah, I used to do lots of uh, mixing and key, but then because uh, Record Box always also have it, yeah. so I just pass it on. Everything straight there, and yeah. uh, I have it all there. I, is, I, it, I, is it normally correct for you? It would sort of. Well, I wouldn't know. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it just tells me there, uh, and I, 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 keep, I don't know by ear, but usually when I use the Camelot wheel, yeah. and you know, I when I 
uh, DJ harmonically. Yeah. They usually work. Yeah. Never run into like big issues. One of the other, they they are off key, but yeah. uh, some of them it doesn't uh, understand if it's nine A or two A. Yeah. So then you're just like, okay, it's one or the other. I'm gonna yeah. try, and if it works, much, it works. How much do you mix harmonically? Um. Look, I depends on the gig. it depends on the gig, but I tend to first look at which tracks that are in key. Yeah. Then I select some of them. I listen to them quickly there while mixing. Yeah. Uh, if I don't think they're fitting yeah. for the moment, for the vibe, yeah. I go for any other keys and I try to work out other keys because yeah. um, yeah. there, there's no point. What matters is if the vibe is going, if, yeah. if, if things, it doesn't matter if you change keys or if it's a slight wrong key. Yeah, yeah. It's People, about getting the crowd going, man. If the, exactly. <laughs> if the crowd likes that, so that's what matters. I've yet to see you perform, but I'm, I'm let's thinking see. you've got a vibe, man. Oh man, let's, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Anytime. When I, when I play again, I'll let you know for sure. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks so much, Reverber. I really good to I chat. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me in. You're welcome. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>